Wargamers, welcome back. We're here, video two of our Alpha Strike how to play slash teach a friend slash teach you how to play Alpha Strike. Uh, so very excited. So in our first video, we talked a little bit about the game, gave an overview of a whole bunch of things, uh, more more akin to a hyper pulse up link, if you will. Yeah. Uh, just kind of talked about uh, uh, the game and what we're going to be doing today. We're actually going to get in and play a game. I've got a whole beautiful battle grid set up. Uh, in front of us here. We're going to talk about everything from setting it up to deployment to playing through a couple of turns. Again, just to give you guys a feel uh, for Alpha Strike. Yeah. Um, so one of, the, one of the important things, I, I mentioned this I think in the last video of Battletech, is the narrative surrounding it. Yeah. So every time we play a game, there is always a narrative. And, a rich um, story. It is true. It is Underpinning true. the climactic battle of mech on mech uh, warfare. It's, it's true. Fantastic. It does add something to the game. You Absolutely. know, we like to give our pilots names and they have sort of histories and like, anyway. Let's talk about the narrative. Yeah. So we're playing in the Dark Age era of Battletech. Yeah. Battletech so what is the Dark Age? Dark Age happens after everything. Dark Age is basically the most recent era to this point. There is the, the um, alleged Ill Clan era coming um, in the future that, that people are excited about. Um, but the Dark Age basically happens uh, in the year 31, well, I don't know exactly when it starts, but this this is taking place in 3145, our game. I think the Dark Age starts in like 31-somethings. Um, and essentially, like, major communication relays across space have been knocked out, um, and, you know, a very peaceful era has now devolved into, of course, chaos and war. Um, so the planet that we're playing on is called Tybalt, and Tybalt is in uh, the Federated Sun space and House uh, Karuda has sent the 11th Ghost Regiment, uh, which is basically the Space Yakuza, to come and attack this, uh, this planet. Uh, and this planet is uh, actually way back in, in the Jihad era, uh, was a point where the word of Blake, a very nefarious and evil force, uh, had... I mean, are they? Most, uh, well, maybe, maybe everybody's got their side You're on the word story. of Blake's side, then. Are they bad guys? Mm -hmm. There was some nuclear action here, let's just say, and it's an irradiated wasteland. Uh, so the only things that can that can even stand this part of the planet are, of course, the mighty battle yes. mechs. So we're doing a very simple four-on-four, four, uh, keeping it nice and yep. simple, Tom. So we were talking before this video, and something Tom brought up I think that is really important was when you're teaching somebody how to play this game, you, you, we really need to, I think, introduce it at a low level. You don't want to drop infantry, tanks, VTOLs, hovercraft, mechs, yeah. you know, and have 30 of them on the board. You're going to overwhelm somebody real quick. Even a veteran war gamer, I think, will appreciate just a simple four-on-four four to start, right? Absolutely, yeah. um, Or five-on-five five if you're playing, you know, clan-on-clan clan or something along those lines. But keeping it small and keeping it mech-only, I think, is a great way uh, to introduce this game. So as you know, at DFA, we always play with a mission. Much like there's a narrative, there's a mission. Um, sometimes it's just a straight-up slugfest. Yeah. And that's a great way to start. Which is also a mission type. It's also a mission. It's called Pitched Battle, guys. Yeah. You can download all of our missions on our website in the download section, dfawargaming.com. Yeah. But that's what we're going to play tonight, is a pitched battle. And so, you know, we do have a whole host of missions, but, you know, keeping it simple, again, uh, is going to be a great way to introduce somebody to the game. Too many variables, too much complexity. Yeah. I think they, they don't really grasp um, all the rules. They don't really understand how to play because there's so much to focus on. So keep it simple. Yeah, and I think that even extends to, like, how you set up the game board and right. everything. You know, you don't, don't make super large hills. If, you know, if, if you're playing on paper, same thing. There's, there's no difference if you're playing with 3D terrain or flat terrain. Don't have too comp like a city scenario is maybe a little bit much too because the turns and everything. Right, right. Keeping it pretty open is yeah. helpful because you really just want to get people into the battle. Uh, right. And fighting. Because everybody just loves checking off the damage boxes and blowing up their opponent. Yeah. That's the key. Uh, so what do we got next? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to do uh, a flyby of the battle grid, introduce you to that. We're going to show you the forces that we're bringing to the table. And guys, remember, these are mech packs, DFA custom designed mech packs available exclusively on Ares games and minis. Uh, so head on over there. We have three, one for the 11th Ghost Regiment, one for the Sword Sworn. Those two forces are playing tonight. And then the Atrian Knights. Knights. The Atrian Knights, my favorite. Uh, so let's check it out. Yeah.
Attention all stations. We have enemy dropships touching down at Sector Alpha 4-4. This is not a drill. Repeat, this is not a drill. All mech warriors to your mechs. Prepare for imminent attack. Base, this is Guard 1. Goodman Lance on patrol in Beta 3-4 and can move to engage. What are your orders? Guard 1, you are clear to engage hostiles. Looks like the Draconis Combine, 11th Ghost Regiment. Be advised long-range scanners are picking up enemy targets headed your way. Be prepared for a... Alright, here we are on the battlefield of Tybalt, the 11th Ghost Regiment. That will be played by me facing off against Tom, Boom. playing the Sword Sworn. Uh, so, let's talk about how to set up a game of Battletech. Now, we have some pretty great terrain here at DFA, and I know some of you guys have some phenomenal stuff out there, but you may not. You may just have some paper mats or whatever, that's fine too. Uh, you may just want to cut some things out or use a piece of styrofoam as a building. That's great. Um, but how do you actually set it up? Well, there's, a, there's really three methods. Um, the first method is you um, alternate. I think this is in the quick start rules. In fact, I know that it is. You alternate. Tom places a piece of terrain. I place a piece of terrain. Um, and then basically, you know, we go back and forth until all the terrain is placed. Typically, what we do is one person will build the map. Um, and that's fine. That's perfectly fine. And when we do that, if we're if you're playing in a um, in a uh, basically in a, an open game like this, where it's not part of a campaign, whoever sets up the map uh, does not get to pick their side. The person who did not set up gets to pick their side. That way, it's a little more balanced. The third way is somebody else, an impartial third party. Like if you're playing at a tournament, or if you know if we had Kevin around, you know he could set up the map, and then it's a little bit more uh, impartial. So. Although I know if I was playing the Atrian Knights, Kevin would set up the map to favor, to favor you, Tom. It's such a lie. <laughs> All right, so guys, that, that's basically it. So, you know, I set up this map. That means Tom got to pick his side, and he picked over there. He decided he wanted to play the Sword Sworn, yeah. uh, and so I'm playing, again, the 11th Ghost Regiment. Can I, can I throw a note out there, too? Please? So, like, if you can, if you have the space to do it, it's nice to get everything laid out as well. So if you notice on our tables, we always have the game board, and then we have enough space to lay out our figures, our cards, our references, our dice, all so that you know you have a play area. It's really critical to keep track and you know uh, yeah. keep organized. Exactly. Organization. Yeah, and we play on a 48 by 48 game mat. This one specifically from Deep Cut Studios. Uh, you can find them at Frontline Gaming. You can find them on P Work War Games. Uh, as well. A lot of people make these. So again, 48 by 48, this is like a mouse pad material here, but you can play on whatever you want. Uh, these tables are actually uh, Costco brand. They're like fold-out tables. I think they're like 40 bucks a pop. You just put two of them together and to and Tom's point... Just enough space. You can, you know... Exactly. exactly. And you can take them down, break them down real easily because they fold in half. And you know, Yeah. That's great. Yep. And of course you can just play, like we said, on your kitchen table. Uh, it, that's fine too, but if you're looking for that, uh, that sort of optimal setup, I think this is, uh, this, this is what works for us, at least. Yeah. Okay, so again, uh, Tom made a point about a quick, quick reference. We have this online. You can download it. It's a sequence of play sheet. Uh, I've got my, my mech uh, record sheet cards here. Mm -hmm. uh, those are also available. 
Yeah, and again, we have a raw version and the DFA house rule version. And then these as well, we've got the, um, yeah, the, this one here, we've got the DFA version here, and then the, the house rule uh, version is, uh, is online, as Tom had said. So, that's about it, guys. So, uh, we are going to get started here. Uh, deployment is, uh, is the first thing. Now, uh, when we deploy an Alpha Strike, you start off the edge of the table. So notice nobody's got any units on the map at all. Um, and in some games, uh, if you're familiar with playing Warhammer, War Machine, typically you put them on the board. Even in Classic, uh, I believe the rules is written as you start them on the board, although they're optional. On the edge, right? Them off. Yeah, see. exactly. But in Alpha Strike, you start them outside the, t the area you play. So that means we go right into initiative. So Tom, Tom and I each have 2d6 here that we're going to roll for initiative. So Tom and I are going to roll here. I got an 8. 6. I'm at a 6. That means Tom lost. So Tom is going to have to move first. So Tom, you take your first model, any model that you choose, and you're going to move it onto the board. Okay. Um, I like this model. I think he's cool looking. So I'm going to move him on the board. Okay. Um, where, so. yeah, where should I, does it matter where I start? Well, you can start anywhere along your home edge. So you, okay. you decide that's you this to start. Here. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so that. I can't come in off of this side? You could not come in okay. off of the sides. You okay. would come in right off that back edge there. Um, and if you selected that unit, that, that is the Mad Cat yep, the Mark Man. IV, a.k.a. the Savage Wolf. What's the PR? Uh, that's, a, I believe, a prototype, prototype variant. Oh, oh. Yes. Uh, Get this of, off the board. No, I mean, listen, it's legit, brother. Uh, some of them got into circulation earlier and ended up in the hands of, of others. Like bootleg. Uh, oh. <laughs> They're like Chinese variants. <laughs> uh, just bootleg. So, all right, so. That's spelled a K. <laughs> so, here's the card here, guys. I might just flash this up on the screen as well. Um, but you can see the Mad Cat has a movement of five. Yeah. Very that's fast. Five inches? That is correct. So I have a um, measuring tape or a ruler. Um, yeah, so five inches, and I can move in anywhere off this edge, right? Anywhere um, you want, yep. Yeah, so I'm probably just going to pick here. It doesn't really matter. Okay. And then, and so, so do I move to the front or the back of the measurement line? Yeah, that's a great point. So you're always going to move front to front. So okay. the, the end of the measuring tape should be lined up with the, the front of his uh, base. Actually, would move this back. Like so. Like that. All okay. right. And that is a full five inch move. So great question there. Great. All right. So what will happen now is you've moved a mech. So now I need to select and move a mech. So I'm going to pick, um, I have four mechs here. I've got, again, the dragon, the tenchi, the avalanche, and the spider. I'm going to take my spider. And you'll notice this spider has, it says 8J. What is J? Well, J means he can jump, Tom. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move him normally, but if I do want to jump him later, uh, I, I know that I have that ability. So again, I would put my measuring tape down, and I would be able to move my spider uh, right to about there, guys. So that's what I'm going to do, uh, and what we're going to do, Tom and I, is we're going to continue moving our mechs here, and we'll be right back. All right, guys, so we're back, and you can see Tom and I have moved all of our units here. Uh, again, looking at the record sheet card there, adhering to that, uh, that movement limit. So, Tom, you're all done? I'm all done? Yeah. So I see on the, um, the quick start reference guide. Yep. Next up is combat. That's right. So um, can I shoot anybody yet? I want to shoot somebody. Yeah. So there are a couple things when you're shooting that we need to check. So the first thing is um, we need to check if the unit has line of sight. So first... You know, because you lost initiative, you would shoot with all your units, then I would shoot with mine. Yeah. So the first thing that needs to happen is you would need to check, really, line of sight, and then verify the firing arc, and then check range. And so this is physical where it's like eyesight level from the mech? Yeah, like, that's exactly right. So okay. you would, you would kind of want to get down and see, you know, maybe maybe that Templar can see the Tenshi or something along those lines. Yeah, I have pretty clear line of sight to um, three, three of the mechs. One okay. of them is behind that tower, it looks like. Perfect. Um, to pretty much everybody. And then he's, uh, he can't see anything because he's stuck behind those, those buildings. Yep. Okay. Now, guys, when, when you're shooting here, Tom, the other thing I want to talk about here is firing arc. So 
you'll see every mech is mounted on a hex base. Um, some of them from Ironwind Metals come on the hex bases. Some of the old plastic Alpha Strike box set minis come on a hex base. If not, you can mount them on a hex base. The back line of that hex base, right? Anything in front of that line, the mech can see. If it's behind that line, it cannot see it, all right? So obviously we're in front of each other. It's pretty, it's pretty easy uh, at, the, at this range. When you're in close or in a city, you know, obviously things get more complicated. So we've, we've checked line of sight, we've verified the firing arc. Now the question is, are you in range? Yeah, and just real quick on the line of sight. So the line of sight starts from not the, the, the back edge, not the front. So it's, does that right. so that means they can basically see, like like these two mechs, I can see that mech. Be, that but is, if it was on the front correct. line, then I couldn't. That's it right. It would be like that, yep. I guess. Okay. Yep. So it is the back line, and that is because the mechs have these really cool, uh, you know, articulating torsos. They can actually torso twist side to side. Um, I believe that Templar actually, when I assembled it, is magnetized. Um, so this yeah. one here, if you if you oh, twist sure. the torso, you can. Very cool, I magnetized because I'm a, I love doing that. So the mechs actually can twist at the hip uh, and you know they can, that's right, look side to side. So they can okay. shoot basically anything uh, that is in front of this line. So, okay. well, I'm gonna shoot um, the Tenchi then. Okay, so we need to check to see if it's in range. Um, so you take your measuring tape. Now, again, we're playing one to one. Okay. Extreme range is out to 30 inches. And where, and oh, I see. Yep. I see on the card underneath the damage that it has the, the range brackets. And those are shared, all mechs have the same range brackets? All mechs have the same range brackets. So whether you're playing with the cards on master unit list or our DFA cards, you'll see, uh, I believe the range is printed on the card. If not, um, it, is, uh, it is in the quick reference sheet, I believe. So, okay. um, so I will be able to figure that out. So again, 30 inch for extreme, yeah. 21 for long. Uh, I, I don't okay. believe you're within... Yeah, so here's 30 inches, so I'll basically start with the Mad Cat, and, um, yeah, so I, I know, yeah, nobody's going to be in range, because 30 inches is the maximum it could be. Yeah, okay. and that Mad Cat's really your, your front max. So, nobody's in range, guys, so that means turn one comes to a close. We go to the end phase, but there's really nothing to do for us. Nobody has any heat. Uh, there's no persistent effects, so now we're just going to move right in to turn two. All right, guys, we are back. It's turn two. So the first thing you want to do, the beginning of every game, a little initiative. That's right, Tom. So uh, two, I got a 10. I'm on fire. Oh, nine. so close. So <laughs> close. The Swordsworn lose again. Uh, so, Tom, that means you need to move first. Guys, remember, the winner of initiative goes last. So okay. I do want to introduce a new concept. Are, are you ready? Um, I'll try. Okay. So there's something that's actually not in the quick start rules. It is in the commander's edition. Um, it's called sprinting. So when you sprint, you can move one and a half times your speed, but you cannot shoot. And what's the benefit? Why would I sprint? Well, you would sprint because you just want to move a little bit further. Okay. Uh, so you know you may not be in range or you want to get behind a building into cover or whatever it might be. Uh, so you can choose to sprint. And, and traditionally, you know, uh, when, when I play a game of Alpha Strike, almost always in the beginning of the game you're sprinting because you're, you know, you're not in range of shooting. Um, but not always, but most of the time. So, Tom, you need okay. to pick a unit, a single unit, yeah. any unit you want, uh, and then you can move him. Okay, so I think I'm going to use the Centurion this time. Okay. Just because I noticed, you know, after I measured for these other guys, um, the Centurion doesn't have any extreme range. Okay. So... I feel like I would probably sprint him because he can't do anything at, at range. That so makes a lot of sense. Okay. Um, so I'm going to sprint him so he moves five, yep. and so he can sprint eight. That sounds right. good. Because yeah. half of five would be two and a half. Right, 7.5, yeah, exactly. Okay. Right. So, 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 eight. Five round okay. Yep. so I have eight on my measuring tape, and um, um, yeah, I think I'll go up on that side of the building. Now, if I wanted to go into here, um, how does movement work with turning in... Alpha Strike. Great question. So um, you, do not, you do not have to spend any movement points to turn the mech. Um, essentially, all you need to do is measure from the base 8 inches, and you can move them anywhere you want. So I can um, just basically go like that. What about like more comp like complex moves? Right. So if there was a complex move, like you needed to get around this sharp corner here, yeah. you, know, you would just measure you know, to here, 
and then you would, you would mark it and then to right turn okay. your measuring tape exactly exactly Got it. okay so i mean yeah i'm gonna run up this side of the building i think okay. so i'll just move him eight so again so from the front of the eight inch measurement to the inside of the measuring tape is the correct movement not uh -huh. not the front but the back correct okay great so um that's my first mech all right excellent so one of the things we like to do at DFA is we like to mark our mechs. So we mark them with a TMM, we mark them if they sprint. You don't have to do this, yeah. uh, but we like to do it. So typically, Tom, what I would tell um, a new player to do here is grab one of those white dice over there. Okay. And the Centurion has a TMM on the card of two. Is that right? And, um, let me look. And so where I find that? So again, on yep, right there. Okay. And so you just turn the dice up to a two, and you place it right next to the mech. Now this makes it real easy for if we're shooting at each other, I know what the modifier is. And then what I like to do is mark it with one of those solid yellow dice yeah. over there um, and put it next to the Centurion. Yeah. And that tells us that it's sprinted so you don't accidentally get to shoot it. And what, what are the colors just related to the mode? Okay, I see on the quick start, black for standing still, white for just move, that's what a normal movement? Yeah, ground movement. Red for jump and uh, yellow for sprinting. Yep. Okay, so I'll put since, and that exactly. and now I know that I can't shoot with that mech. That's exactly okay. right. And that helps both of us remember because again, when you're playing bigger games, you have 12, 13, 14, 15, 27 units on the yeah. board. It can get, you know, you play a whole phase, you get the shooting, it really helps. Again, this is not anything you guys need to do, uh, but uh, if you do have some spare dice laying around, uh, it's always it's always helpful. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to choose a unit, right? We alternate. I choose a unit, and I need to move with it. So I, I think I'm going to keep this dragon here uh, on the outside flank. So here's my dragon. He's looking real real fly there with his arrow four launcher uh, mounted on his back. Now my dragon, it's a dragon two actually, very fancy, uh, has a TMM of one and a movement of four. I don't see him being in range again. He does not have extreme range. So I'm gonna to choose to sprint him like up there in this area. So I put my measuring tape down like so. I line the six up to the front of his hex base and then I'm just gonna move him right to the end of the measuring tape like so. All right guys, and, and that's it. Uh, so I mark my unit up. Again, he's got a TMM of one, so I, I flip my dice like that, I mark them for sprinting, and Tom and I will continue to alternate back and forth, and we'll be right back after we're done. All right, guys, we're back again on Tybalt, this irradiated wasteland, uh, little industrial centers here and there, these two mech forces closing in. Tom and I finished the movement phase. Um, I can just recap what I did. So that dragon, as you remember, sprinted there, I sprinted my spider right up the middle. The Tenshi also was not in range of anything, so I ended up having to sprint him. But the Avalanche, uh, we'll, we'll, have some, we'll have some shots, hopefully. So I just uh, did a standard move with that Avalanche. You can see all my guys are marked up with their TMMs. The ones that sprinted do have that yellow die there. Tom, looks yeah. like you, you made out pretty well over here. Yeah, I, similarly, yeah, I, um, <clears throat> I walked these two because they both have decent extreme range and, and long range. I'm terrifying. Um, but the Crimson Hawk only had a one on the extreme, so I, I sprinted him just to get just him. get him in closer. Yeah. Makes sense. But maybe that was a mistake, but. Well, you know, we'll, we'll find out. Mm -hmm. all um, and we saw what the Centurion did. So yeah. we are now moving into the combat phase, your favorite phase, Tom. Yeah. Your most favorite. When do I get to shoot when stuff? When do I get to shoot stuff? So uh, you actually get to shoot right now. Yeah, and so I, let me, I'm gonna, okay, let me remember. So I have to check line of sight to start, right? Verify line of sight, correct. <clears throat> so, yeah, for sure, um, the dragon's the guy in the front? Ah, uh, the spider. Spider, okay. So I think I'll, I'll fire at the, the spider. Woo! Um, okay. Again, let me just check the range. Let's um, see where you're at. So I'm just under 21. All right, so that puts the mad cat in long range of the spider. And he is just at 24, so, so he's... So put him in extreme, because yeah. it's over 21, yeah. uh, but under 30. So the Templar and again, there, I can... I uh, see that on the card. I can check those range brackets. Correct. Yeah, and they also, they're also here on the quick reference sheets, guys. Again, no matter which one, the RAW or the, um, the DFA one that we're looking at here, 
We do have all the ranges and the modifiers, which we'll talk about in a second. Great. Oh, I see it. Yeah, completely okay. uh, available to you, printed right there. So the Templar again at extreme range, the Mad Cat there at long range. So, okay, Tom, so which one would you like to shoot with first? Um, the Mad Cat. Okay. The Mad Cat. So what do I do? All right. Well, what do you do? So the Mad Cat is at long range. So okay. I'm going to come over to your side of the table, Tom. What get away is from the... me? <laughs> Right, we, have to, we have to maintain a, a three. Is it three feet now? Yeah. Uh, so what uh, what is the long range damage on that mad cat? Uh, three. Three. Okay. So that means what you're going to do is fire at this spider with three points of damage. So how do you know what what to do here? Well, guys, it's very simple. Uh, what we have here on our quick reference sheet is a little guide to figure out what your target number should be. What's a target number? Well, Tom, a target number is what you need to roll on two d six to hit. The spider. And that's step four. So we've done step one, verify line of sight, two, verify firing arc, three, determined range, and now we're on four. Right. So determined, determined to hit number. Okay. So um, let me grab my card, yeah. um, my med cap. So, so there's this, this acronym called SATER, uh, which is skill, the attacker mod, the target mod, other mods, and range. So skill, all of our mechs are skill three. Three. Okay. All right. Uh, the attacker mod. Okay, so the attacker mod you'll see in this table above. Did you stand still? No. Did you do a ground move? Yes. All right, so your attacker mod is zero. If you jumped, it actually gets harder to hit, okay? Because the, the plus here means your target number, the number you need to roll goes yeah. up. The lower the number, the easier it is to hit. Right. Okay. And then you'll see cannot attack on sprint. Okay, so you're at a zero for the, uh, for the attacker mod. The target mod, that's my TMM. Now, where do I find that? So again, that is, so you're shooting the spider. I have that conveniently presented to you. Uh, it is a three. The white die with the three on it. Exactly. Okay. So, so far we're at a six. Yeah. Three for the skill, zero for attacker mod, three for the target mod. Now, other mods. Well, what are other mods? Well, if there was cover, like if I was hidden, um, more than 33% of me was hidden by, you know, a building or... Uh, a hill or, you know, we'll talk about cover later, but you can get cover and other things. If you had a fire control critical hit, right, there are things, other things, uh, but that's a zero. So we're still at six. And then the big one here is range. Okay. And I'm in long range. Right. Long range. So using the optional rules that we, that we use, remember, it's very simple. Uh, one, two, three, four, four, short, medium, long, and extreme. So you're at a plus three here. Again, yeah, I see that on the card above the damage number. Two. Yes, also printed okay. on the on the DFA cards as well, just for for ease of reference. Uh, okay. So as it's well, three plus uh, three plus three. So we've got. Remember, we're using also the multiple attack rules. So yeah. in rules as written, you would roll once. If you got a nine, you would deal three damage. But with our optional multiple attack rule that we use out of the commander's edition, you're actually going to roll three times. Once so I, for each point of damage. So I roll three to hit? That's right. Okay. And you need a nine each time. And for okay. every nine or better that you get, you deal a point of damage to that spider over there. Okay. Are you ready, sir? Um, yep. I, and how many, I roll, because it's a nine, I have to roll two dice, right? Yeah. You're always okay. going to roll 2d6 to okay. hit. Always? always? Okay. Always. Yeah. Okay. Then, um, <clears throat> so I need a nine. So first roll, six. So nothing. It's a mess. Second point. There you go. All right, so the spider's taken at least one point of damage. Nicely done, Tom. Two points of damage to the spider. That hurts. The spider, not very tough. Now, guys, you'll see why we like the multiple attacks, right? If you just rolled that first time, you would have missed. Yeah. Nah, that's not fun. But rolling three times. And right? I would have done three points of damage to your mech. Right. Or if you hit, right, it would have been three. So uh, that's why I like the variable. So let's look at the spider here. You'll see it's got, it's totally undamaged. It's got three pips of armor, two pips of structure. It took two points of damage. So guys, I'm just going to, of course I'm holding the camera with my, my uh, right hand here, but you would just mark off uh, two pips like that. Hey, not too bad. Um, and so that's all you need to do. Now these cards here, guys, uh, are printed out on paper. Uh, I have Magic the Gathering cards uh, backed uh, behind these to give them a little bit of a, a weight. And then I sleeve them uh, with these dragon shield sleeves. And that way you can use dry erase markers and, uh, and just mark them off. Of course, you don't have to do that. You can just print them off on a sheet and, uh, and use pencil or pen and throw them out when you're done, whatever you need to do. Uh, but that is basically what we do. And that is it. So, Tom, you've successfully dealt damage to the spider. And you haven't dealt any structure damage to it yet. It's just stripped off a couple of points of armor. 
So that mech is tough. It's able to keep moving. Okay. Uh, but it is it is hurt. It is hurt. How does that make you feel? Good. I, I feel like I'm glad I hit. <laughs> uh, so it feels good about it. Now you're yeah. not done yet, sir. No. So I also have my uh, Templar. Yes. <clears throat> who has extreme. He's in extreme range rate. We measured he's 24. Yeah. And so anywhere between 22 and 30 inches is extreme range. That's exactly okay. right. And it doesn't matter or if you're 21.1, right? Yeah, right, exactly. Okay. Anything over 21 inches. Okay. So, and right, because you're on a 3D, you know, sort of battle grid here, right, you get fractions of an inches. So anything over 21, that's a great point. Okay. It's extreme range. And guys, it doesn't matter if you're at 21 and a half or 30, it's still the same bracket. Okay. So uh, we've done steps one, two, and three. So now we're at, again, to determine the hit number. So let yeah. me try this on my own. All right. So my skill is a three. All Correct. of my mech pilots right. are a three. Okay. And then my attacker mod um, is uh, based on the movement I did. Uh, that's right. So okay. he did a standard ground move. So it is zero. Correct. Okay. Um, and then my t the target mod of your mech. That's right. Is TMA. a three. Yep. That's okay. exactly right. Uh, there's no other. Nope. And then the range now. Um, again, I look on the card. I see it's plus four. Plus four for extreme, right? Yeah. So it's a little bit harder for the for this guy than the man. So it's a ten. So it's I have to get a ten. ten. Now, okay. What is what is his damage at extreme range? Uh, the damage for the Templar at extreme is a two. Okay. So you get to roll twice. Twice. And you're looking for tens or better. Okay. All right. Let's see what you got here. All right, so the first one is a miss. The second Seven. shot, Eight. Mm, nothing. <sighs> okay, the fighter lives to fight another day, uh, but guys, that is uh, basically you're you're done shooting. Now, do I have to mark anything on my cards? You need to mark nothing at okay. this point. Um, you did not overheat. There was nothing adverse that happened to you. That there. Um, very few things actually happen to you when you're shooting, so and, you're, and, you're basically done. And I leave my dice alone and everything. You leave everything alone. Okay. All right? Uh, because the, the turn is not over, just your phase is over. So now that you're done shooting all of your guys, I get to shoot. Now what's important, guys, is there's a little bit of a nuance. When you move, we, we alternate back and forth, back and forth. When you shoot, strangely enough, you must shoot everything on your side, then I shoot everything on my side. So the winner of initiative has a pretty substantial advantage. Uh, important to note here, sprint, sprint, sprint. I only have one guy that can shoot. So he is, I, I pre-measured this, he is at extreme range to that Crimson Hawk, which is the little guy in the front. Yep. yep. Uh, and uh, I just did a standard move with my avalanche. And so going through uh, basically the motions here, again, skill level is three. Uh, I made it the same for all of our mechs. Again, guys, if you're playing with somebody that's new, keep it simple. Make everybody the same. Three, four, two, whatever. I mean, honestly, the lower the better, because the more you hit, the more fun they're going to have. Uh, so I made them all three. I think that's a nice, a nice round number. And uh, again, so his skill is three. The attacker mod is zero because he just did a standard move. Uh, Tom's unit, his target mod, his TMM, is a two. And you can see it's marked there on that white dice. Uh, and so uh, the only other thing I need to add is range, which is extreme. So three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. All right, so a little bit less there at extreme range than your uh, Templar because the TMM on the Shadow Hawk is lower. I'm sorry, the Crimson Hawk yeah. uh, versus the Spider. The Spider's a little bit more nimble. All right, so I need a nine. The Avalanche only has, I'll show you this, only has one at extreme range. So I, I'm gonna hit or miss here. One point of damage, looking for a nine or better. What? Critical hit. Wow. <laughs> All right, so this is an exciting moment, guys. That is a critical hit. So I think what we're going to do here, Tom, is we're going to wrap up here. All right, guys, this is basically the nuts and bolts of what you need to know to play, you know, your first game. We're going to come back in our next video, all right, and we're going to pick right up where we left off, and we're going to get into some more advanced concepts like critical hits, like some advanced movement types, like moving up and down hills in forests. We're gonna talk about these Rain, things. Cover. Cover, right? All of those things will be in our next video, but guys, I hope you enjoyed this initial introduction, dipping your toe into the water here, and uh, we will be back real soon. Thanks again, Tom. I'm and hooked. I gotta play again. I, I need more, <laughs> I need more. <laughs> All right, well guys, stay tuned. We will be back soon. Always great stuff coming from Death From Above Wargaming.